Pyeongsan Seoul is located in Pyeongsan-ri, Pungcheonmyeon, Andongsi, Gyeongsangbukdo. In front of Pyeongsan Seoul, the Nakdong River and mountains spread out like a folding screen. Pyeongsan Seoul originated from Pungak Sodang, which was built during the Goryeo Dynasty to nurture the future generations of the Pungsan Ryu clan. In 1572, while Seoe Ryu Seongnyong was serving as a local governor, this Pungak Sodang was moved to the current location suitable for study. However, it was destroyed by the Imjin Weran and was rebuilt in 1607. Pungak Sodang became a Seowon after the Confucian scholars who admired Yu Seongnyong built Jondokse in 1614. After that, in 1863, King Cheoljong received a frame picture written Byeongsan. On the day I came here, it was raining lightly. As you walk along the broad road, among the gardens planted with barberry trees, the first building you will see is Pongnaemun, the main gate of the Seowon. Pongnaemun is relatively small compared to the main gate, and the name Pongne is derived from the analects of Confucius. There is a meaning to throw away your personal greed and to be temperate with manners as you enter this door. The magnificent building that appears in front of you as you enter Bongnaemun is the Banderu, which is evaluated as the highlight of Pyeongsan Seowon architecture. This building, capable of accommodating about 200 people, is the largest and most magnificent among a tall building of the Seowon in Korea, with seven room in the front and two room on the side. If you go up to Banderu and look ahead, you can see the Pyeong Mountain and Nakdong River between the pillars spread out at a glance like a seven panel folding screen. The view of the river and mountains from the top at sunset is considered one of the best in the Seowon. The scenery from Manderu is beautiful, but the building itself is also very beautiful. It is evaluated as a representative work of a Seowon building in Korea that maintains the function of the building well and utilizes the traditional landscaping technique and a drum hangs on one side of this manderu, ceiling beam. This drum sounded when women, strolling actors, and alcohol, which were taboo in the Seowon, were brought in. I wonder how many times it actually rang. The floor under the floor is just as beautiful as the floor and ceiling of manderu. You can feel the harmony created by the curved natural wood and planks and the naturalness of the unfinished foundation stone. Pass Manderu and carefully climb the stairs to enter the lecture area. In front of the large yard, you can see Ipgyodang, a lecture hall with a signboard saying Pyeongsan Seowon. With the main floor room in the middle, there are Ondol rooms on the left and right. The east room is Byeonsongje, where the director lived, and the west room is Gyeonghyeje, where the professors lived. 
and when viewed from Ipgyodang, Dongjikje is on the left, and Tonghoje is on the right. Ipgyodang is a place where the director and students gather once a fortnight to check their studies. Ipgyo means to properly establish the teachings of cultivating human ethics according to the good nature bestowed from heaven. Dongjikje is the building where the upper class students of the Sawon lived and studied and means to behave properly. And Dongjikje is the building where the lower class students of the Sawon left and studied, and means quiet your heart and give up your greed. In Changpangak, wood blocks of documents written by Liu Songnyong are kept. These wood blocks are included in Korean Confucian books, which was registered as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2015. In front of Changpangak, there is a natural garden with grass, barberry, and ginkgo trees. Tonsatong is a building where items used for ancestral rites were stored and food was prepared. Tonsatong is usually enclosed in a fence along with the shrine. But Tonsatong of Pyeongsansawon is unique in that it has a separate fence. In front of the Tonsatong, there is a gojiksa called Chusa where the workers who manage the Sawan live. Here, the workers prepared meals for the professors and students. So they use the word chu, which means kitchen. There is also a warehouse where food is stored. And the size of the Sawan can be guessed as to the size of the it. In front of this gojiksa, there is the most beautiful toilet among Sawans in Korea. It was called a snail lavatory and was used by workers. If you follow the wall between Gojiksa and Ipgyodang, you can find the shrine. Great Myrtle in front of the Desanmun of the shrine is nearly 400 years old and it is the oldest tree in Pyeongsan Sawon. Pyeongsan Sawon has the largest number of crepe myrtle among Sawons in Korea. It symbolizes unchanging love for ancestors and seniors. Inside the Daesanmun, there is a shrine called Jondeoksa, where the tablets of Seoe Ryu Seongnyong and his third son and disciple Ryu Jin are enshrined. Liu Seongnyong was loyal to his country, filial to his parents, and did his best in learning all his life. Nevertheless, in his later years, he left an article titled Three Hunts. I have three regrets in my lifetime. The first is that I failed to repay the kindness of the prince and his parents. The second is that I did not step down early even though I had too much office and peerage. The third is that I had the will to learn the way, but failed to achieve it. Pyeongsan Sawon, which faces the swirling Nakdong River and Pyeong Mountain that stretches like a folding screen, is a place where you can feel the loyalty of Seoye Ryu Seongnyong as much as its beauty. On July 31, 2010, it was first registered as a UNESCO World Heritage Site as a member of Hawe Village. And on July 6, 2019, it was registered as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, once again as one of the Korean Sawans.